You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We are exploring more emotions. Now calm, I used the calm voice. Anger. I used yeah. the angry voice to so introduce angry. it. Today we're discussing agency. I'm not sure what voice to use for this one. <laughs> I, Ooh, well, we'll find out. Come up with a voice. For I know. We need a voice mm. for agency. Uh, it mm. is Mental Health Monday. We're going to talk with Dignitas <laughs> Heidi in just a moment. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting the Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. We are talking with Deaconess Heidi Gaiman. She's the author of Emotions and the Gospel, Created for Connection and Finding Hope from Brokenness to Restoration. And you can find all of her writing at HeidiGaiman.com. Heidi, welcome back to The Coffee Hour. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk about this one. I feel like we should use like elongated words or something. I don't know why, but it gives me that sense of like, oh, that's agency. Like, I don't know, things are reachable or something. I've ne- I have to admit, it was probably adulthood when I first heard the word agency as an emotion or even a concept other than like a business. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's so funny. I didn't even think. You are always thinking of like the other side of the coin. Like, I feel like we should write a book together or something. Or like, oh, here's this side of the coin. Here's the other side, right? Yeah. Mine's the pouring side, though. <laughs> Well, I think agency is is it is a little bit like therapeutic social worker e in our culture. Like we oh. tend to um, reserve it for those kind of settings. Now, I would say that agency is interesting because I think it's it's certainly a thing that's outside of emotion. Like it can be given to people. It has more attached to it as far as like action orientation and the way we live our life. However, because it is an emotion, there's a sense of it. And if I am outside of that sense of it inside of me, it will be harder. Just like if the listener returns to a couple of the other episodes we did about calm, then I will have limited access to even the agency that is objectively real in my life. All right, so let's define it because I have another question, but it won't make sense until we define it. So, okay. <laughs> so what what is agency? Obviously, it's not an, a, a company as we've already discussed. <laughs> That's good, right? Yes, it's not a nonprofit or yes, no. Agency, the ability to create action or movement of one's free will, the internal sense that resources, help, ability, capacity, and power are accessible to me in some way. Access member is right there in the definition itself. I think that free will is especially like a a kind of a theological piece to that concept of agency. Like it is quite incredible that God gives us agency, that he objectively is like humans. You know, there's you're gonna have a lot of freedom in deciding what you want to do in life and how you want to navigate life. I'm gonna kind of like leave that to you. And God leaves it so much to us sometimes that we're like, wait, no, like tell me. I, you know. But that's that's not God's way. Like instead that free will is a, a reality for us. And in that, because we are humans created by a God who is good and gave us free will, we all have agency of some way, shape, or form. And it is an objective reality for us. That said, speaking of the injustice and justice that we had in our last episode around anger, people can uh, stunt our agency. Um, It can, because of like the organization of society and order with families and their brokenness, we can have agency taken from us by people who were entrusted to take care of us. We can have agency limited by things like financial resources because that's how we function in the world. So the brokenness of the world quickly comes into impact that agency that God has given us as human beings. So Sorry, Sarah, did I interrupt your question? Please give me your question. I'm excited. You partly answered it, but that's okay. But I want to I want to maybe highlight that more clearly that agency, as opposed to some of the other emotions we've talked about, feels more, I don't know if relational is the right word, but it, it feels more susceptible to being influenced by the relationships that we're in. When I think about like times that I've talked about how someone doesn't feel like they have agency that's usually because of something that's happening in a relationship with another person specifically, how it, it it's so heavily influenced by how we are directly relating to the people around us. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, I would say that is true. I do think one of the reasons I wrote Emotions as a Gospel is created for connection and it is has. because emotions in themselves are so oriented and influenced by relationship in ways that we are just not being very cognizant of and that especially in our culture, we keep at bay. And so emotion in general, heavily influenced by relationship. Agency, I think, is actually what you're pointing out is one that we see it more clear how it's impacted by relationship. And so I do think that is really true. The the people in our lives, we we were created to be in relationship. And so their all their brokenness will have an unfortunate impact then on us. And that is one of the great truths of life that is really challenging because if it's my sin, I can deal with I can maybe begin to deal do something about it. If it's someone else's sin or just brokenness, stuff they can't control even, but it's coming into my life or the universe's, right, issue, then like that's very challenging for me. I have much less power, right? That's part of agency. I have much less ability to decide how I navigate it and all of that good stuff. And so my story on my website is actually about my recent loss of agency that really brought this to mind. And, you know, I am a privileged white woman in America. Like, I have a lot of agency and even felt agency where I feel like I have the resources I need most of the time. And when I don't have them, I know how to access them or I can find people who can help me access them. I have a education and capability. And then there's, like, a lot of problems that impact my agency. But recently when... I was kicked off of Facebook by no no creation of my own. And it literally took like half of my content that I had created and ability to like bring my content to people that I regularly connected with to to teach and to be in community together and to do all that work of like mental health awareness and stuff. It was shocking how much my relationship with Facebook And we can laugh about it all we want, but the reality is, is like, we all have a relationship with the internet for the most part and certain portions of it in particular. And that impacted my career. It impacted a lot of my relationships. And I was so like confused by it is what I would say. Like there was an aspect of perplexity about it that I just couldn't, I was like paralyzed by it. And I think that happens with agency a lot where your, again, access to what is there is blocked because of other emotions that have come in and kind of sat on top of it. Hmm. What might be some examples of experiencing agency as a child and as an adult? Mm, Yeah. Or somewhere in between. (laughs) I think it was, oh gosh, that was Maybe during COVID, we did a series on development, right? Oh, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, Yeah, remember that? We did like different, it was super fun. And so we will have the listener go back, you know, right? Enjoy our series on development. But one of the stages of development is that exploration, right? That there, and, and other parts of development are related to this in different ways. But one of the building blocks of, of like very early development is people allowing us to find our agency to be able to sense it in a way inside of our system and then be able to create connection, right, to other people or to the things around us or to our capacity or our capabilities and talents and gifts and knowledge and all of that stuff. That is an important part of like development. I mean, anywhere from ages 18 months to like five, six years, there's a lot of that work going on. And so then if that is is shut down, either on purpose or accidentally or out of someone else's anxiety and things like that, then our sense of agency will naturally be a little stunted as we grow. The other thing that impacts this is trauma, right? So trauma is an agency stealer because it's a shock to the system. It does spike those hormones inside of us to kind of block our perceptions of safety and to be on guard in the world around us. And so that sense of on guard or on edgeness, that over-awareness almost, is what then takes also away from our agency. When we have been hurt in a way that sticks 
inside of our heart and our mind and our bodies and souls, then we really need some of God's restorative work and his word and the resources he gives us in order to process that so that we can have that sense of agency again, because trauma is a big blocker to that. There's other things in the world too, then socioeconomic status is a huge piece of this because we live in a world, like I said, that's, you know, like monetary is how we exist in the world and how we get what we need and the resources. So many things that impact our agency. Yeah. And you can see how it gets broken up by the brokenness of the world. Yeah. What does that feel like? What is that like to not have a sense of agency? What is what is that flip side of this emotion? Ooh, yeah. I wondered in, in the article, I might have had some like clearer language for this. But I mean, I think it feels, especially if you have had it and then it's gone. I can speak from personal experience. It feels yeah. like being robbed. Like it does feel like that is like kind of the way the trauma feels in our system is that something has been taken from you Mm -hmm. and you're never, you, you don't know if you'll ever get it back. And if you do get it back, then how will it be distorted? Or you're in that sense of like, this can happen now. People can have like this kind of impact on my person and my being. And so It's this really big sense of loss, I would say. It is related to definite loss and grief. There's also powerlessness is a big piece of it, where that powerlessness tends to be like a shrinking emotion. Maybe we'll have to cover this one next year. But it like, we get smaller, right? And so we either want to get smaller and hide because of it, or we feel pressed towards smallness. And so I would say that's one word connected to that feeling of it is feeling smaller than we are. It doesn't feel expansive or like we can, I remember I said stretch or reach or elongate. Yeah. What agency, right, feels like instead. We are discussing exploring more emotions today with Heidi Gaiman. We are talking about agency. We'll continue the conversation in just a moment right here on Mental Health Monday on The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. At Concordia University, Wisconsin, we believe you were created for a reason, to use your God-given gifts to help others, to live a life of self-sacrifice in a me-first world, to live a life that's uncommon. Whether you're taking one of 50-plus online programs or learning with us in person on the shores of Lake Michigan, you'll be equipped to make an uncommon impact. Learn more at cuw.edu. Concordia University, Wisconsin. Live uncommon. Welcome back to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We are in Mental Health Monday. We are exploring more emotions. Today we're exploring one that's relatively new for me, maybe for you, maybe some of you have understood this your entire life, but we're exploring agency today. <laughs> but what does agency mean? And this is a, this is, I've, I'm enjoying exploring this one. This one, like anger was fun. I enjoyed exploring that. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's almost nice. Yes, that was nice. And what was before that? Oh, wonder. wonder. That was a good one too. And this kind of comes full circle coming back to agency now. So we've defined it. We've given some examples of it. Is it subjective, objective? In what ways is it subjective? In what ways is it objective? Um, okay, so I think also that sub- subjective and objective understanding of it is heavily impacted by culture, right? Like, do we experience agency as more individual or more communal is a big difference. And so I think about even our like brief stint in Haiti, like the they-ness or the us-ness was much more important in agency. And so in that, I could even access agency more objectively from what is around me because it was a communal culture. And so like the resources, if you will, were understood to be shared more. And so it wasn't as dependent on my internal sense or feeling of it because the like support 
system, while the resources may not be there, the support for finding them was there. So my lens of it was more objective. I think in Western culture, in American culture in particular, we tend to have much more subjective problems with agency because we don't have that natural support network. Our free will is so considered to be individualistic. Mm -hmm. And my understanding of the choices I can make and my access to things is so internal in our culture that it makes our experience of agency much more subjective. I think there is components of subjectivity and objectivity overall in it. I do think it helps to return to remembering where agency comes from to begin with. And this is the gift of God in Jesus Christ, that like I I have some power, I don't have all power is really evident when I am before God, right? <laughs> And that sounds like it might even be kind of scary. Like if you're like, oh, like God's so powerful. In reality, because we know God in Jesus Christ, God is constantly giving his power to us. Like he's constantly helping us feel more empowered by the spirit, by the enlightening of the spirit and his word. This is like much more part of who he is and his work in our lives. Whereas people, it's very easy to feel like they're taking, right? Taking, taking, taking. That said, if I live in a communal culture, this might be a a little bit more helpful for me to access agency because it is understood to be something that's shared a little bit more naturally anyway, even though imperfectly. Yeah, that's a really interesting thing to think about how this is specifically influenced by how we individually see ourselves as a part of a group as Americans in a very individualistic society. So yeah, that's that's a side of it I hadn't thought about before. But thinking about it that way, especially in an individualistic society and having the recognition that I can impact somebody else's agency with my own actions, how do we approach other people then in situations where we might have the power to impact somebody else's agency? I think this is actually a lot of times when we talk about the concept of privilege, I think agency is actually what we're talking about a lot of times. Like, how can we build someone else's sense that they can actually make choices? It's like instead of handing someone a resource, it's that idea of helping them know, hey, like there's a God of the universe and he gives you free will and there's a lot of resources out there. And created for connection together, I want to help you know that this is like an internal gift that you have. And I can see it like this is that concept of empower, right? The word empower in the English language is what we do for each other by helping each other grasp and sense that agency again or stronger so that we can go do the thing whether it's take care of our family or do some career thing or minister to someone or a thousand other things, that that idea that we have an, an impact on each other, again, is very ephesians right? That there's like submitting to one another in Christ. I think that concept of submit is a little broader than sometimes we have taught. And this is part of that, is kind of giving agency back and forth and that sense of the agency that's already been put in them by Jesus Christ. Is there a connection between agency and confidence? Hmm. That's a good question. Okay, so I in IFS framework or internal family systems framework, confident is also a sea of self. Like it's something that's inside of us that then we either have access to or don't have access to, or we have some access to, right, at any given time. And so in that framework, I would say that agency is connected to confidence because with when I have access to that part of myself, that I believe that there's room and space for me is what one way that I define confidence, that there is that I have a place in this world, that, and especially that God has given me a place in this world, then yes, then my agency is clearer to me. I have a stronger sense of it and I can go move about in the world. Yeah, now I'm trying to think about times if I've felt like I've had agency but haven't had confidence because that's come up a lot in my oh, I think for sure. Yeah, I think for sure. 
Well, and I think, okay, so confidence is really complicated. And again, <laughs> another thing that we sense, but we also have and blah, blah, blah. There's some objective, subjective personality components, right? So, but I think what you just pointed out is like agency is a little more a objective because it's connected to free will. So it is something that just is whether we sense it or not, whereas confidence is more about our sensing and then there is some objectivity to it. So it's like, but it's more about the sense of it, whereas agency is more about the objectivity of it and then leading to the sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is. This is a fun thought experiment today. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm enjoying this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when we think about agency ourselves, how do we? What's a what's a good way for us to experience agency or or understand if we are are or are not experiencing yeah. agency? I think one of the best ways to get in touch with our sense of uh, agency is to dream, right? To consider something we want. That's all or desire, or need, or like, just consider something that we want to access in the world. And dreaming is a good way to do this, right? It doesn't mean we're going to get the dream, but the sense of agency is in believing that I can like even begin to consider it. And so that starts to like poke at and like enliven, if you will, flicker that flame of agency inside of us. And then we kind of blow on the flame by saying like, okay, like what is available that might help me get closer, connected to this thing that I'm interested in, that I want, this dream or idea? Like what is the shape of it? And and how might I like remember the elongation? I can't believe how often that's coming back in this episode, like that I can reach out for it and touch it. What is, what's the steps between point A and point B? 17B over here, right? Like, and then to imagine like created for connection, right? Who around me can help me access, right? That's not an American. <laughs> I think we do attend to that. But again, like this is much easier in other cultures. It's like who around me might help you with that dream? Who might be interested? And in even just thinking through this dream with me, like what ideas might they have connected to this dream? Um, and then that brings that in, like what resources are out there in relationship to this dream? What makes it feel totally untouchable? What feels like the barrier in the way of that dream? And all these different questions or some form of them are available on my website under the article on agency for an exercise to do. But I do think if you just start with that flame of like a small dream and then start blowing on it, like all the things connected to it, like a little web, I think that can begin to just ignite that agency. And especially we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. Like God cares about our free will. Doesn't mean we're going to get our dreams come true. Like that's not the promise. But that God's in it with us is absolutely the promise. And I do think that also feeds that agency. Agency. Good one. I enjoyed exploring that one. As we wrap up our time together and we wrap up the series on exploring more emotions, anything you want to point us to or any final thoughts as we wrap up exploring more emotions today, Heidi? <laughs> well, the article on my website, which I have had people wonder, like, why isn't Heidi on Facebook? Like, what's his <laughs> Like, I had people who thought I unfriended them. Like, they thought, like, I was on Facebook, but I just wasn't connected to them anymore and things like that. And so people can find out a little bit more about that on this article online. But I do invite people to connect with me because that's something I highly value. And it gives you the links for my Instagram. I am not back on Facebook because a Facebook doesn't let you back on in an easy way. And also, I think I'm hurt by Facebook. <laughs> so I decided, ooh, here's a good agency piece to set a boundary with something in my life based on the change of my access to agency. And so, yeah, I'm no longer on Facebook. It's crazy. And so I just invite people to, kind of, you know, connect with me and look, look at my website to kind of find ways to engage in that a little bit more. And I am doing some new research work on a book around boundaries. So I'm, I'm looking forward to doing the work of that over the next two years. So it's something that's been really requested in my work and to have an alternative or a little bit more Lutheran view of boundaries in our life with Long Gospel. 
Wow. Okay. Emotions and the Gospel Created for Connection. You can find that from Concordia Publishing House, cph.org, or anywhere you find books uh, by Heidi Gaiman. Also, Finding Hope from Brokenness to Restoration. Great book. We had a great chat about that here on the Coffee Hour for a while as well. Heidi, thank you so much for spending some time with us on the Coffee Hour and uh, being a part of Mental Health Monday again. Thanks for having me. Always enjoy it. You can find more of her writing at HeidiGaiman.com. You've been listening to Mental Health Monday on the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere. Anywhere.